right guys, this is the first official lesson in the new studio. I am so pumped up to finally be back, fully functional, making videos. So thanks for just waiting it out with me. I really do appreciate it. And we've got something super exciting for you here today. We're talking about chord inversions and triads. Now this is something that it took me a while to realize how many of my favorite guitarists were doing this. Eddie Van Halen, constantly doing chord inversions. Eric Johnson, Jimmy Page all of these guys, I didn't realize how crucial it was. And once I started learning it, it just completely revolutionized the way that I look at the fretboard. So what you guys are about to watch is taken from my brand new course, Chord Inversion Workout, first course here in the new studio. And uh, if you wanna support the channel, this is the main way to do it. So if you dig any of the lessons, you wanna check it out, it's 50% off this launch week, you can snag that down below. And this is a course that covers so much stuff. You know, I wanna give you a bunch of exercises and concepts that you can apply musically seven different backing tracks for you to apply this stuff to. We've got all the different ways of playing your chord inversions. There's even a song and solo that I wrote where I kind of break down everything of how I'm viewing, incorporating all these triads into a solo and rhythm situation. So we cover a lot. If you're a player who just kind of has your basic cowboy chords under your fingers and you want to expand your voicing and just chordal knowledge across the fretboard, this is a great way to do it. It's a really fun way using different backing tracks that I've provided for you. So think about it like this. If you play a G major chord, you know, can you play it in all these positions without even thinking about it? If not, there's a lot of good musical nutrients inside of this thing and immediately go to A minor. You know, they're all over the place. And this is just, it, it frees up the fretboard like nothing else will. I'm telling you, you combine this with your scales, game changer. So check that all out if you would. And this example is based off of a diagonal approach of going through all the chords diagonally. Let's get it. Okay, so what I wanna do now is we're gonna move diagonally with a bunch of triads. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine different triads together. So. So far, we've pretty much tried to stay in the lane of whatever chord or triad we were doing. So when we were focused on Gs, when we were doing like the stacking, it was like a bunch of G majors. When we did the inversions, it was a bunch of Gs. This time, we're doing this. We are moving through all of the chords constantly every single time we change positions it's a new chord so the first one we're doing is our power chord of our g major okay so third fret low e string fifth fret on the a fifth fret on the d now a challenge for you is i want you to think about what we're going to next we're following the chords in order okay so we're, what's after g a minor so now we're going to go from g major to A minor, we're switching shapes, which is this can be a little bit tricky for your fingers. You're gonna be playing seventh fret on the A, seventh fret on the D, and then fifth fret on the G. So just that little transition there might be challenging. Focus on kind of singling that out, singling that out, can't talk. I will say for these, what I'm doing is I'm picking down, down, up. I know it's not a picking course, but if you're curious, that's how I'm picking them. Now we continue and each time we switch, we're dropping a string. So we're getting different shapes each time under our fingers. And that's how we're getting this diagonal movement across the strings as well. So the next one would be B minor, and you're gonna be playing ninth fret on the D, seventh fret on the G, seventh fret on the B. So you have. Okay? So. so after that B minor, we're gonna go over to C major, which is on the G. So you're gonna go ninth fret on the G, eighth fret on the B, eighth fret on the high E string. So this is already, look at how much of the fretboard we've covered. After that one, you're gonna go to D major, which is gonna be 11 on the G, 10 on the B, 10 on the high E string. So that is your D major, so.
Next is E minor. So you're gonna go 14th fret on the D, 12 on the G, 12 on the B. So they, these transitions, we're moving diagonally, but in the kind of an upward motion, can be extra tricky at times. Okay. The next one is tough. We've got our F sharp diminished. You're gonna play 15 on the A, 16 on the D, 14 on the G. And we're bringing it on home. Led Zeppelin joke. To uh, our G power chord, same thing that we started on. 15th fret on the low E string, 17 on the A, 17 on the D. Right there. So all together, real nice and slow, it would all sound like this. Guys got it. A lot of cool stuff in there. So let's kind of flip the pattern around, start on the high E string, and work it that way. All right, guys, that is going to be it for us here today. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Anybody who checks out the course, thank you all so much. I don't think you'll ever understand how much I really do appreciate it. But on that note, we're gonna end it bluesy, chord inversion style. Oh snap, how's that gonna go? And then he goes country.